What's up y'all, Rob here, Square Wheels. Thank you for checking me out. Welcome to the channel if you're new. Welcome back if you're an OG. Thank you for your support. Sorry to leave y'all hanging, but I am back. I have completed my headlight project. I'm gonna share everything with you today. For those who are new to the channel, this is the third and probably final video in a series that's dedicated to demystifying the whole headlight retrofit thing for the Infiniti Q50. When I first started on this project, I decided I wanted to you know, do some custom work on my headlights. I started sniffing around and I couldn't find any information about it. The people that had their custom headlights done ripped them out of their car, sent them off to some professional and got them done for some exorbitant amount. Um, and I realized that these are just kind of cheap LEDs. It's not kind of rocket science, but the people that have the information, they're holding on so tight to it that nobody can do this for themselves. So I said, I'm gonna throw some money at this, figure out how to do it, document everything and share it with everybody. So if someone else comes down the line and they're trying to do their own headlights, they've got at least a head start. I'm not saying that I'm an expert at this. I'm not saying that, you know, this is the way to do it. I'm just saying that I got it done and I'm sharing how I did it. So in this video, I am going to cover uh, a few things. One, I ripped out the Lighting Trends controller and I installed a Blue Ghost controller. So I'm gonna walk you through that. And I'm gonna walk you through the differences between the Lighting Trends controller and the Blue Ghost controller and everything that it gets you. Um, what else? I also installed Demon Eyes. Um, so I installed the Lighting Trends Demon Eyes with the Diode Dynamics uh, Demon Eyes controller. I'm gonna walk you through end to end how I wired it up and all the hoops I had to jump through to get that done. Lastly, I've got etched lenses installed. So these really pop with the Demon Eyes once the lights are going through the headlight lens. Um, these etched lenses kind of help catch some light and they can display whatever pattern you want on your headlight lens. It's a really cool look. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through how I did that also. So sit tight, everything's here, there's chapters. Uh, down at the bottom so if you want to jump ahead or if there's something specific that you're looking for check out the chapters also note this is video three so if um you know you're not sure how to pull the headlights out you're not sure how to disassemble them or or you know bake them in the oven or all that stuff i cover that in videos one and two so you'll probably want to check those out before you go through this video I'm doing this for free. This is not my day job, so I'd appreciate if this is helpful for you, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Any comments, any questions, please let me know in the comments or hit me up on any of my social channels. I'll link them down in the description also. Thanks for checking me out. See you on the other side. All right, first stop and probably most important, the most significant change in this headlight project was installing the Blue Ghost controller. Now, I wish I would have known this before I went and installed the Lighting Trends controller, which is a good controller, it's good at what it does, but I wish I would have known that this Blue Ghost controller was out there because it's a whole different level in terms of customization options, in terms of animations, and in terms of integration with the vehicle itself. There's two things that make the Blue Ghost controller way better than the Lighting Trends controller and better than any other controllers I was able to find. Um, one is it has multiple inputs. So now what this means is that whenever there's an event from any of those things like your headlights or your left turn signal or your right turn signal, you can program the Blue Ghost controller to do something special with whatever lights are connected to it. So having multiple inputs is super helpful and it sets it apart. For instance, the Lighting Trends controller doesn't have any inputs. So basically when it's on, it's on. It has no idea what the car is doing. It doesn't know if you know, your headlights are on. It doesn't know if you're turning. So obviously it can't do anything like sequentials or welcome animation or anything like that. So that's where the power of the Blue Ghost controller is. The second thing is it's always on, um, but it's on constant power. That means that whenever the car sends a signal, even you know if the car isn't on, sends a signal like, hey, he unlocked the door so the parking lights came on for a second. The Blue Ghost controller can respond to that and have the lights do something, and that's how those welcome animations are configured. Now, y'all, I want this to be as easy as possible for you, so what I've done is put together a wiring diagram, and in this wiring diagram, I detail everything from, you know, from where you're getting power from, where you're getting certain signals or triggers to your Blue Ghost Plus controller, 
where you're wiring the outputs from your Blue Ghost Plus controller, your Demon Eye wiring, basically everything you need for this entire project. If you want to do it exactly the same way that I did with the welcome animations, with your daylight, day running lights running, um, this is your holy grail basically. You just use this and if there's ever any part where you get hung up, come back to the video or just zoom in on the wiring diagram. The answer is probably right there on the diagram. So hope this is helpful for you. Again, if you see value in any of this, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate the support. All right, so let's take a peek at the Blue Ghost controller. So the first thing I did when I uh, took it out of the box was uh, unscrew all these screws on the back just so I could see uh, everything that's involved, everything that, you know, I'm gonna need to hook up to, to get this project done. So first thing is first, let's start on the ED side on the top end. So what you'll see here is two very familiar connectors, the, the three pin connectors that go to your LED strips. So just consider these the outputs. They connect directly to the lighting trun strips if that's what you go for, or you know probably any other strip. You may have to change the uh, sequence of the wiring, but uh, just consider these things coming out of the top as your outputs. All right, pretty easy, right? All right, so now we're gonna flip this over and look at the bottom side, because that's where things start getting a little interesting. And what I'm gonna do is kind of walk you through left to right, uh, everything going along the bottom, starting with five volts of input. So this is what you're gonna need. This is mandatory. You're gonna need the step-down connector or the step-down um, power supply that came with the Blue Ghost unit, and that's gonna connect to your battery. And it's gonna step down the 12 volt signal down to a five volt signal so you can power your NeoPixel LEDs. All right, next up is the 12 volts of input. So you're gonna connect this directly to the battery and it's gonna give you 12 volts of, of electricity. Uh, and this is optional. This is only if you've got a Blue Ghost Plus and if you've got 12 volt accessories that you're gonna to wanna to power trigger through the Blue Ghost Trust Plus. All right, here's where it gets really cool. So the Blue Ghost and the Blue Ghost Plus both come with four inputs and they allow you to tap a signal from your vehicle to tell the Blue Ghost to do something special when an event happens. So you can essentially wire these to anything. You can wire them to your brakes, to your you know door ajar light, basically anything you want to do. So I'm gonna walk you through what I did and I've got a, a wiring diagram that I'll share, um, but you can essentially use these inputs for anything. And lastly over there in the dark purple is the four 12 volt outputs. Uh, this is also really interesting. I really recommend the Blue Ghost Plus. I think you get a lot of value out of it. So these outputs are basically um, switched 12 volt lines where you can connect any 12 volt accessories. So in my personal build, I use two of these, one of these for the LED emblem and one of these for the demon eye so that when I unlock the cars or when I do anything special, um, these outputs get power and they turn on my demonizer or they turn on my uh, led emblem so all this can be configured in the app once you've got these wires hooked up okay let's talk about the four inputs so on blue ghost documentation they label these inputs as ln1 through ln4 and to get your headlights configured the exact same way that mine do where the animation kicks in when I unlock the doors and the day running lights stay on and then we've got sequential turn signals. These are the four inputs that you want to use. LN1, which it has labeled as break or party mode, I've actually got going to a switch 12 volt connection and it's right by the fuse box by the battery. This is the same spot that I tap for my lighting trends headlight controller. Um, I just basically used that same wire and ran it right to the spot on L1. LN2, I got hooked up to my parking lights, and this is what um, is actually used for the welcome animation. When you unlock your door, um, it turns your parking lights on momentarily, and when you lock your door, it turns them on again. It's using that to do the uh, welcome and the shutdown animations. So I tapped the combination connector, uh, and it's this exact location on the combination connector right behind your uh, headlamp. Now don't worry about the wire colors because they're different from all the models, but the pin position is exactly the same. So what you're gonna wanna do is flip your combination connector upside down so the clip is on the top end and then you just count. So for the parking lights, you want pin number two. LN3 and LN4 are pretty simple. They're just for the left and the right turn signal. And what I did was tap 
the uh, turn signal positively right behind the connector for the turn signal and just ran that up to the blue ghost. And all this is shown in the wiring diagram, but I just thought it might be helpful to talk through it also. Okay, I promised I wasn't gonna walk you through the whole disassembly of the headlamp again. If you need to see that, go ahead and go back to that original video. But what I'm gonna go through here is exactly what I did to install the demon eyes as well as the etched lenses. Now, etched lenses are easy and accessible for anybody because they're actually just vinyl overlays. So I'm gonna walk you through how to do that and take a look in the description also uh, tell you where you can get a set of etched lenses for yourself if you're thinking about doing it. Okay, so what you're gonna need to do is, once you've got the uh, headlamp assembly completely out, you're just gonna need to remove all the screws that you need to in order to get access to the lens itself. Now, what you'll see is that the lens is actually glued on to its enclosure. It's a light gray uh, enclosure, and it's actually glued on, on there. Now what I did was use a knife to just pry up the seal. It was really easy and I kind of broke the seal from the glue and lifted the lens off of its enclosure. Now what you'll see on here is that the back of the lens is actually completely flat. So it's perfect to lay down a vinyl overlay on it. So here you'll see the vinyl overlay that I chose. I chose a honeycomb pattern, but you can get literally any pattern, any logo, anything you want. Uh, for these uh, etched lenses. What I'm doing here is just making sure, like on this enclosure, there's little uh, studs and there's little holes in the lens itself. And that tells you which way is up. So if you've got something like a, a logo where you wanna make sure it's completely perfectly vertical, you can line up those studs and then line up your overlay to make sure that, you know, it's gonna be pointing upwards when you stick it to the back of your lens. Okay, once you got everything lined up, all you need to do is just push the lens down right onto the vinyl overlay. What's cool about this is that the lens is perfectly clear, so it makes it easy to kind of line things up and make sure that you got everything straight. Once you push it down, make sure that you've got a good seal, got good coverage on that vinyl overlay. And this is going to be a pro tip here. So um, one thing I made sure that I did was look at the lens from all different angles. And as you can see here in the video, from some angles, you can see where the overlay wasn't stuck down to the back of the lens. Make sure you go over it with like a hard card or a microfiber rag and just make sure that everything, every square millimeter of that overlay is stuck to the back of the lens and then you won't have any gaps in your pattern no matter what angle you're looking at it from. Okay, mine is looking good to go. So now it's time to line it back up on the uh, lens enclosure itself. And I use super glue just to put the glue exactly back where it was. Um, and it ended up being a, a really good seal. I'm really confident this will stay. If you're nervous about it, I don't know, use something industrial, some, some adhesive that's gonna you know, make sure that the lens sticks to the enclosure itself. All right, let's talk demon eyes. So for demon eyes, there's really gonna be three components to make up a full set of demon eyes. The first part is obviously the LEDs, the demon eyes that are actually gonna go into your headlight enclosure. The second part is the driver for the demon eyes. And in my case, through Lighting Trends, the driver came with the LEDs um, and they didn't come with the third part, which was the controller. So in my case, I went and tried to install these demon eyes and I didn't have a controller because nobody told me that, you know, that they needed a controller. So I thought I'd be able to use a Blue Ghost controller. You cannot use your day running light controller. You can't use the lighting trends controller. You can't use Blue Ghost controller. You need a dedicated controller just for the demon eyes. Don't ask me why. I don't understand it. If I had it my way, you'd just be able to use a single controller for all your LEDs. But I couldn't figure out a way to do it. If you know a way, please let me know in the comments below. 
So three elements, LEDs, the driver, and the controller. So for the Demon Eye LEDs themselves, you need to find a way to um, put them in the headlight enclosure um, so that they're bouncing light around in the enclosure, um, but not affecting the throughput of your main headlight LEDs. So what I did was on that enclosure, um, there's like a flat metal surface and allows you to um, put the Demon Eye LED flat on that and it actually points straight up so it's not going to be blinding anybody it's not going to be uh, affecting your output from your headlights or anything like that um, that's where I put it to use the LED and the board for the LED and I super glued it down to that metal surface now you can see here I was very careful to make sure that you couldn't see the edge of the board and so when we're looking closely at the lens of your headlight so my demon eye board is completely invisible you can't see it no matter no matter what Okay, so by now you should have a fully assembled headlamp assembly with your frosted elements, your lenses, everything back exactly the same way. Me personally, I ran all three wires out of that open uh, location in the back where that cap goes and I just drilled into the cap and I ran all three wires out and I used a hot glue gun to seal that up. All right, so here we are with some illuminated demon eyes and what I'm gonna do is just work backwards from the demon eyes. So from the demon eyes, we know that they're already um, put on the uh, headlamp um, pointing straight up. You can see they hit the frosted eyebrow a little bit. Uh, I'm not super thrilled about that, but hell no, I'm not going back in. So you can make your own decision on that one. From the demon eyes, it goes directly to the lighting trends demon eye driver. Okay, this is the Demon Eye driver from Lighting Trends, and what you'll see is it's got those two outputs that go right to each of the Demon Eyes. They're five pin JST connectors, so you know for sure that they go to the Demon Eyes. Um, on the other end of that are the input cable, again, another five pin JST, and then there's another cable with a ground and a yellow wire coming out of it. Now that yellow wire is an optional connection. It can go to your uh, headlights, and whenever you're getting a signal from your headlights, it'll turn off your demon eyes so you're not uh, burning them out uh, unnecessarily. Obviously, you can't see the demon eyes if your headlights are on. Okay, the last wire coming out of your driver is actually gonna be the input. And this is where your controller is gonna connect to the driver and tell it what to tell the demon eyes. And where this got weird for me is the driver had a female five pin JSD connector and so did the outputs for my controller. And this left me in a weird scissoring scenario where we're rubbing our stuff together and not getting any pleasure. So what I did was I went to Amazon and I bought a pack of male and female JST connectors. And I knew that I was gonna have to change the connector on one of these things. If you end up in a similar situation where you've got different brands of controllers and drivers and you need to change your current connectors just make sure that your signals are matching from the controller to the driver make sure the red wire is connecting to the red wire the green connecting to the green blue to blue black to black white to white otherwise this won't work ask me how i know ask me how many hours i blew on this so what the f is it expecting all right, y'all, we're almost there. Now we understand how everything's wired, how everything's connected to each other. So last thing to do is just show you how I've got everything positioned within the engine bay itself. Let's see how I got this hooked up. Okay, so what you'll notice is that everything I've got tapped up here behind the battery. So if we look in a little bit closer, see I've got two taps right after the amp. So it's a fused 12 volt big boy going from the amp to these two. These two go to all my stuff and I got it stuck under here and running whatever wires need to come out so i've got my grounds and all my grounds are wired to 
this bolt right here. And then anything else. So these are the two input and output cable that are coming from the Blue Ghost and going under here. And just to be honest with you, there's a lot of wiring under here. So the harnesses for my Blue Goose controller, my Dio Dynamics uh, Demon Eye controller, uh, the Lighting Trends Demon Eye driver is all back here. It's a cluster. Looks like uh, someone wired a time bomb to the inside of my car, but all this stuff is wireproof. All the connections are heat shrunk, so I've already been through car wash and a rainstorm. Everything's secure under there. I feel really comfortable with that. And then it just kind of goes back here. So do one of these zoom outs just to kind of help with the big picture. And then I'll draw on top of this. So the wiring goes from the this headlight to over here to back there. Demon Eye, same thing from this headlight across here to there. LED is just 12 volts, goes from here to the Blue Ghost controller up there. One of those signals, the ground goes to this post right here. Same thing with these headlights here. So these headlights have the day running lights from lighting trends they go short cable right back to the blue ghost controller two of them same thing for the demon eye to the blue ghost controller and then all my stuff is back there so that's it that's all y'all this ended up being a really long project really long video but a lot of it was you know just uh trial and error because this information isn't out there so i hope this saves y'all a lot of time as always thanks for checking me out like, subscribe, share, and I'll catch you at the next one. Thanks, y'all.